welcome back to the next session with the recap on the previous session we shall discuss about estimating the quantity of domestic or sanitary sewage estimation of storm water and estimation of industrial sewage in this session so in our previous session we had discussed about the estimation of total quantity of sewage so here sewage means it is the sum total of domestic or sanitary sewage industrial sewage together with ground water infiltration so now what does this estimation of total quantity means before that so what are the important ingredients in this sewage that we are speaking about so we have two different components of sewage that has to be given importance during this estimation that is the dry weather flow and the next one is the storm water so now what we have to see here is those two components together comprise of the total quantity so what does it mean by dry weather flow all the sewage that is arising out from a community which includes residential industrial commercial institutional and private or the public property next is the storm water the runoff or the rain water from the selected locality or a particular locality which is joining to the sewer or which moves on to the final disposal through the sewer is the storm water next important thing is that what is the thing that has to be considered in case of dry weather flow so here with this startup we shall see what are all the things that are adding on to this total quantity so here the dry weather flow means the sewage that should be considered during the rainy season that is for the 3 to 4 months in a year along with the flow in the non rainy season also therefore the three important things or the three important add ons to this particular point is first one the domestic or sanitary sewage next one is industrial sewage and the last one is ground water infiltration considering all these three together will constitute the dry weather flow so now the next important thing is that what are all the factors to be considered while estimating the dry weather flow or what are the factors that influence to the contribution for this load first one is <coughs> rate of water supply second one is type of area served infiltration or exfiltration 
and the last one is the population growth. So, all these factors influence to this dry weather flow, which in turn will reflect on the total quantity of domestic or sanitary sewage. We have discussed about these three factors individually in length in our previous sessions. So now, what about the important aspect here that is, how we are estimating this part. So, I will tell the total quantity of sewage. If we are telling total quantity of sewage, then we are supposed to consider the load from all these three parts individually. Then only we get the net quantity. So, why do we need the net quantity? So, as to design the sewer appropriately, which is a must here, which otherwise does not satisfy the completion of the efficient project. So, now estimation of sanitary sewage. We shall go one by one. Now, estimation of sanitary sewage. So, what are the ways or the what are the liquid ways that has to be considered with this sanitary sewage? So, all the ways or the liquid ways arising out from a community. Right? So, now, what does influence the estimation of this part? Of course, very importantly, it is the rate of water supplied to that particular community. So, let us assume that a community is being supplied certain quantity or the calculated quantity of water supply. So, what is next thing that has to be thought of? It is about the conversion of the water supplied to sewage. So, on the whole, whatever the water that is supplied to us, that is the rate of water supplied will be equivalent to around 70 to 80 percent of the sewage generation. So, what happens with the rest of the thing? Rest of the thing, it may be lost during evaporation for the consumption. If we are talking about the industrial purpose, then it can be during the loss during the air cooling, street washing or gardening or floor washing or for the consumption of the manufacturing, I mean during the manufacturing process, if and if at all, if it is a food processing industry or in a very simple way, I can tell. An example, it is a beverage industry. So, it consumes the water rather than contributing to the load of sewage. So, now what is to be taken care here is whenever we are speaking about the conversion of water supply to sewage, the thing that has to be thought further is about design of a sewer. Of course, as we know, sewer is the one which carries the sewage. So, it has to be designed accordingly such that the old load that we are letting out has to be carried safely to the final point of disposal. So, now what is that we are supposed to look for the design? Designing in a sense the velocity that plays a very vital role. If and if at all, if the velocity is too large, then there won't be space for any automatic flushing. If the velocity is too small, then it leads to the silting or the deposition in the particular sewer. So, the next important thing that we have to see here in case of estimation of sanitary sewage is that 
whatever the sewage that we are estimating is only an average estimation why is this term average estimation because not all seasons or not all days in a week or not all week in a month has the same consumption of water that is the consumption of water varies in turn the production of sewage also varies so that varying has to be considered this term has to be considered therefore it is termed as average rate of flow that is passing on to the sewer so now what is this important while we are designing a sewer we'll have to look how the sewer is designed the sewer is designed to facilitate the maximum flow and the minimum flow so now the maximum flow whenever we are calculating the maximum flow that is we will take this average generation of sewage so the important thing that has to be seen here is the average flow has to be multiplied with the present population at the beginning of the design period and the same average flow has to be multiplied with the prospective future population such that to get a peak factor next is estimation of sanitary sewage the rate of sanitary sewage generated is usually expressed in liters per capita per day so now here what we have to look is whatever the water that is supplied to us will be converted to sanitary sewage that is around 70 to 80% of the water supplied is converted to sanitary sewage and in order to estimate the average flow we will have to consider whatever the sewage that is generated per capita per day at the beginning of the design period and at the end of the design period so the per capita demand or the per capita generation of sewage will be multiplied with the present population at the beginning of the design period and per capita demand or uh, per capita generation of sewage multiplied by future population at the end of the design period so this is at the beginning of the design period here it is for the end of the design period these two quantities or the calculations help us to find out the total quantity of sewage generated at the end and at the beginning of the design period which helps us to find out the average flow so now the average flow is not constant it will vary depending upon the contributing population this is very important the average flow will vary depending upon the contributing population so now the next important we have to know is about the variation of rate of generation of sewage or the sanitary sewage the variations may be seasonal what we call that as monthly 
इट मे बी डेली और आवरली वेरिएशन वॉट वी हैव टू लुक हियर इज द सीजनल वेरिएशन डिपेंड्स अपॉन द seasons that is for example if it is in case of summer the usage of water will be more which in turn produces more sewage while in case of daily it is the habits of the people and custom of the people especially if you are speaking about country like ours wherein we use or we have a tendency to use more of water during sundays and holidays that is for example in those days we usually tend to use more of water for the activities like washing cleaning etc so in turn those days will contribute to more amount of sewage that is what we mean by daily variations and next hourly variations this is very important let us understand that hourly variations by this small representation hourly variations of rate of generation of sewage from a community let us say in a day we have the activities varying from smaller usage of water to large quantity usage of water so here what we have to see here is not all hours in a day will produce the same quantity of sewage for example consider this graph here i am mentioning it here as hours of day in x axis hours of a day in the y axis it is quantity of sewage generated in meter cube per second a activity starts from the early morning so that means initially we have the more quantity of sewage generation starting that is this is a graph which shows the hourly variations of sewage generation so in x axis we have hours of the day in y axis we have quantity of sewage generated what we can see here is the sewage generation starts to attain maximum by the start in the morning that is around 6 am in the morning and it start increasing up to 8 o'clock and the same rate will be there till 10 o'clock in the morning so during this hours we have maximum usage of water with the subsequent generation of sewage while this maximum flow starts to take a dip from 1 to 4 in the evening so in this time we don't have maximum usage of water or the generation of sewage next again the increase will start in the evening 6 o'clock such that there will be more generation of sewage during this point and this continues till 8 o'clock in the evening eventually there will be a fall from 8 o'clock till the midnight and early hours of the next morning so we can see here it is the midnight and early hours in the morning we can see there is a fall so what we can see here is the variations is very wide so in essence we don't have the constant rate of water supply and we don't have the constant rate of sewage generated also 
So all what we have designed or all what we are calculating is only for average flow. So we don't have the constant variations here. The next important is the maximum seasonal monthly, I mean the next important thing here is the maximum seasonal daily or hourly variation can be expressed in terms of may be expressed in terms of annual average daily flow that is for example if you are considering the annual average daily flow as 100 then the annual flow for seasonal may be considered between 130 to 140 the annual average flow for daily variations can be considered as 150 to 180 the annual average daily flow for hourly variation is very high that is around 200 to 300 considering these things will give us an important thing to note that is the peak factor as we are calculating the flow for annual load we'll have to consider the peak factor the value of the peak factor we'll have to consider the annual average flow that is generated along with that we'll have to consider the peak factor the peak factor is not constant it varies depending on the population so for every annual average flow will have to multiply with the peak factor. The peak factor will depend upon the contributing population. So the contributing population say for example if it is around 20,000 one example then the peak factor will be 3. Then if the contributing population is between 20,000 to 50,000 then the peak factor will be 2.5. If the contributing population is 50,000 to 75,000, then it will be 2.25. So what we can see here is with the increase in the population, the peak factor is lessening. For the design of sievers, maximum or peak rate of flow of domestic sewage has to be considered this can be considered based on the peak factor. What is peak factor? It is the ratio of maximum flow to the average flow. So what is the factor that contributes to this peak factor? It is the population variation of the particular locality. Therefore, in order to design a sewer for maximum flow, we have to consider this peak factor very importantly. Next important thing is that this peak factor varies for different sewers in a network. That is, in a SIVA network, we have different sievers wherein the peak factor varies from one sever to another. This is because that peak factor varies depending upon the maximum flow and average flow. Therefore, sometimes if and if at all, if we don't have the peak factor, we'll have to consider that as recommended from the CPHEO manual meant for sewerage systems. Next thing is that there is a contributing factor and a peak factor. The contributing factor here is the population density. Fine. So what we can see here is up to 20,000 population. 
the peak factor can be 3 from 20,000 to 50,000 the peak factor will be 2.5 from 50,000 to 75,000 the peak factor is 2.25 above 75,000 it is 2 so what we can observe here is with the increase in the density of population the peak factor is reducing the peak factor can be calculated using the following empirical formulae the first one is known as the Babbitt's formula Q max by Q average is equal to phi by p to the power of 0.2. Next one is the Armand's formula which means Q max by Q average is equal to so here Q max means maximum flow of domestic or sanitary sewage Q average means average rate of flow, P is population in thousands. There is a restriction for this Babbitt's formula. The restriction is that it can be used if and if at all if the P value is 1000 that is the maximum of 1000 or if the p value is minimum of 1 but there is no restrictions as of this Armand's formula is considered. The peak factor also depends upon the average flow and the maximum flow. It differs from individual sievers because the maximum flow and average flow for different sievers varies depending upon the population density. <coughs> Next is the peak factor depends upon density of population. It depends upon topography of the site and very importantly the rate of water supply. So it means the peak factor for all the sievers in a sieve network varies which means there will be variations of maximum flow and average flow for each and every or each and individual sever in a sever network. Next is the minimum flow, minimum rate of flow of domestic or sanitary sewage. The design of sewer is not only dependent on the consideration of maximum flow but it also depends on considering the minimum rate of flow also which means that if and if at all if the sewer is laid longitudinally at a longitudinal gradient then it has to suffice the minimum velocity which otherwise may lead to deposition of cells therefore on an average the minimum flow has to be designed for 1 by 2 or 
1 by 3 the ratio of average flow. Next is estimation of industrial sewage. The rate of the sewage generated from an industry depends on various factors that is what is the manufacturing process adopted in the industry, what are all the raw materials used, what is the end product that they are desiring and very importantly what is the type of the industry whether it is a red category industry, orange category industry or a green category industry. This categorization is based on the strength of the wastewater that they will be generating. So this category influences on the design of the sewerage system for that particular industry. As we all know whatever the water that is supplied to the industry that is from some designated proper source that is either from a corporation or from a municipality that particular water supplied will be converted to sewage that is the rate of water supply is directly dependent on the sewage generation. So what quantity of water will be converted to sewage in an industry? around 80 to 90 percent of the water supplied will be converted to sewage. So what about the remaining portion? It will be either let out in the form of evaporation or in the form of cooling or that may be used in case of boilers or in any of the food processing industry. So now is it only the designated water supply source that will be converted to sewage? Not always. Sometimes it may so happen like in any of the industries they may use water from the private sources. So the water supply for an industry may be even a private source that is any of the tube wells or any of the sources that they are planning to use in case. That is these sources will also contribute to the sewage which ultimately will be let to the public sewers. So here let us consider this is a public sewer and we have an industry located here. Industry will let the sewage of some characteristics. Can we let this sewage directly into the public sewer? The answer is no because the characteristics vary widely in case of industrial sewage. So what we are supposed to do is we have to bring those characteristics to the characteristics of the domestic sewage. will have to equalize the characteristics and then let into the public sewer. So that characteristics equalizing will be depending on the regulatory authorities. So they will regularize certain things. So this particular characteristics has to be in this limit. Then only we can let this sewage into the public sewer. Next is estimation of groundwater infiltration. Apart from the sewage from residential areas, apart from the sewage from industry, next is estimation of groundwater infiltration.
the quantity of ground water that may join the sievers has to be considered. But it always depends on two important factor. One is at what gradient the sever is laid and another thing is that the workmanship of laying of the sievers. So not all ground water will join the sievers. Only that portion which will not be absorbed by the ground or which is not let as a runoff will be joining the sievers. Henceforth the sever will be designed not only for the maximum flow, not only for the minimum flow but for the worst condition wherein there will be high chances of groundwater infiltration also. So all these together will contribute to the total quantity of seaway generated from a community. Here we have various empirical formulae for calculating storm water runoff and these formulae are based on the local conditions. So the first formulae here is Berkeley Ziegler formula. This is the oldest empirical formula. Here it is QP, the quantity of storm water in meter Q per second. K is the runoff coefficient. P is the intensity of rainfall in centimeter per hour. A is the area of the catchment in hectares. S0 is the slope of the ground surface and A again here is the area in hectares. The second formula, the second formula is the Dickens formula. This is suitable particularly for northern India. Here also we have QP as the quantity of storm water in meter cube per second. We have a constant named as C. This depends on the catchment area and intensity of rainfall. M is the catchment area in square kilometer. The next formula is Rivi's formula. Here again QP is the quantity of storm water in meter cube per second. C is a constant and M is a area mentioned in square kilometer. The third formula is Rivi's formula. This empirical formula is suitable for southern India. QP is the quantity of storm water in meter cube per second. C is a constant dependent upon the intensity of rainfall and catchment area. M is the area that is the catchment area in square kilometer. The next one is English formula. This formula is suitable for fan shaped catchments. Here again we have QP for calculating the storm water in meter cube per second. We have M the catchment area. Next the formula derived for Hyderabad region is QP is equal to CM wherein this is the discharge, the constant and an area that is the catchment area again. Last one is the formula based on Indian records and this is Dredge or Burgess formula. The formula based on the Indian records is Dredge or Burgess formula. QP is the quantity of storm water in meter cube per second, catchment area in square kilometer, length of the catchment area is L.